Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about scatter plots. So this is just an introductory lesson about scatter plots, what they are, um, how we describe them, and some different things in a scatter plot that we look for. The worksheet that we're going to use today is this one. It's just called scatter plots. And if you have a copy of this worksheet, you should get it out now so you can follow along with me as I go through the examples. If you don't have a copy of this worksheet, that's fine too. You can still follow along and you can still learn everything that you need to know about scatter plots. All right, so here is the problem. It says, describe the relationship slash correlation in the scatter plot shown below. Identify any gaps, clusters, or outliers. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at what we have written here in the star because the star is pretty important. And that's the definition of what a scatter plot is. So a scatter plot is a graph in the coordinate plane that shows the relationship between two sets of data. So a graph has two values on it. We have the x value across the bottom, we have the y value going up the side. So if we look at this example down here, the number of days absent, that's our x value, and then our y value is the average in math class. And these points on this scatter plot just identify maybe different students, right? Maybe they asked a bunch of students in a class, hey, how many days have you been absent so far this marking period, and what's your average in math class? So if we look at this point, Right here, this is a student who was absent for six days and their average in math class is a 70, right? This one over here, maybe at the end, this is a student who was absent for 10 days. Looks like their average in math class was maybe about a 24, right? So it's just a relationship between two sets of data. Now we describe scatter plots, the relationship or the correlation, right? That means the same thing. We describe it in a couple of different ways. So one way that we describe a relationship is we would say that it's positive, right? And that means as the x value increases, so does the y value, right? As this goes up, this goes up. Another type of correlation is a negative correlation, and that's as the x value increases, the y value decreases, right? So the points go down. And then we have some um, scatter plots that have no correlation, like it's just a bunch of random points all over the graph and they appear to really have nothing in common. So let's talk about this particular graph right here. Now one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at a scatter plot is the points are not going to be perfect, right? You're just looking for a general trend in the points. Like you look at the graph overall, you read it from left to right and you say to yourself, for the most part, would I say these points are going up? or they're going down, or they're not doing anything. They're just all over the place, and I can't make any sense of what's happening in this graph. And that's very different from what we've been doing because we've been graphing so many linear equations lately where the points have to be in a straight line, right? It has an exact slope, which is a repeated pattern over and over and over again, and that's not the case here. So when I look at the points on this graph, right, think about that for a second. Do these points look like they're going up or do they look like they're going down? Or do they look like they're just kind of all over the place? I would say that they're going down, right? It looks to me that the, the higher the number of days absent we have, the lower the average in math class, right? These points here, if I look at the graph from the left side to the right side, are just kind of like going down from left to right. So the way that I would describe this is I would say that this scatter plot right here is showing a negative correlation. So that's the first thing I'm going to write on this line. Right? Negative correlation. Because generally speaking, these points are going down. Are they in a perfectly straight line? Absolutely not. But for the most part, they're going down. Right now, step two is we're going to look for some other things happening in the scatter plot. And there's three different things that we look at. So the first thing is something called a gap. And a gap is exactly what you would think it is. Think about people that have like a big gap between their teeth, right? A gap is just an area that contains nothing, like a big blank area. The second thing that we're going to look for are called clusters. And a cluster is when you have a group of points all close together. 
And then the third thing, this is my favorite one for some reason, I don't know why, but the outlier. An outlier is a point that just doesn't fit in, right? It's like an outsider. It's just something that is like wrong when you look at it. It doesn't make any sense with the rest of the graph. So let's identify these three different things in this particular graph because I put an example of each one in here for us to look at. So the first thing is a gap. So if you're looking at this graph, we just wanna look for an area on the graph that has no points. And I would say that this area right in here, right, this area right here, I would say this is a gap because it's just like an area where there's no points. So I'm gonna call that my gap. And then a cluster, I'll do them in different, different colors here. A cluster is a group of points that lie close together. So when I look at this graph right here, this to me, this group right here, that looks like a cluster to me. Because there's quite a few points all together right there. Right, and we might argue that this is another cluster down here, but these just seem a little tighter to me. Do you know what I mean? Like more on top of each other. And then I'm sure that you guys are able to see where the outlier is, right? I think it's this guy over here, look at him. This guy right here, I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't seem to make any sense with the rest of our data. Because this point right here is saying that there was a student who was only absent for one day, the whole marking period, and it looks like their average is about a 35. So that kind of doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? You would think that a student who was in school almost every single day and didn't miss any math lessons would have a much higher grade in math class than a 25. Or I guess that's a little higher, right? That's a, that's a 30, maybe like 35 it looks like, right? Because this would be 30 right here. But either way, it just looks like that, just, that point just doesn't belong. All the other points are here. They're all kind of in a row, right? They're all kind of in a line going down from left to right. And then we've got this guy out here all by himself. So the way that I would describe this graph, first of all, is I would say that it has a negative correlation. Another thing that I would say is it has a gap, right? I would say there's a gap between, I would say, three days absent and five days absent. Right, three and five days absent. And then I would also say that there is a cluster, right, because we want to describe all these things. And I know I marked them off on the graph, but I'm just going to describe it here kind of using um, the data on the graph. So I would say there's a cluster between, I would say between one day absent and three days absent. And I'm just writing days here, right? But we know that that means days absent on the bottom here. And then finally, I'm going to identify my outlier. And I'm going to say my outlier is at, I'm going to write kind of like the ordered pair for this. I'm going to say at 1. And then this number right here, if this is 30, I'd say that's about 35. So that's how I would describe this graph. I would describe it as having a negative correlation because it looks like it's kind of slanting downward. I would say there's a gap between three days absent and five days absent, right, right in there. I would say there's a cluster at the beginning here between one day absent and three days absent. And then I would say there's an outlier right here. And my ordered pair for that would be one day absent with a score or, an, or a grade in math class of 35. All right, so that's our first part. So now let's look down at the bottom of the page and talk about a couple other things. So when we're looking at our scatter plots, we describe them as positive or negative, like I said, and then sometimes we describe them as no correlation. But sometimes we have a strong positive, sometimes we have a weak positive. Sometimes we have a strong negative, sometimes we have a weak negative. And that all is determined by how close together the points are. So when I look at this first graph right here, if I look at my graph from left to right, I can see that generally speaking, these points are going up from left to right, right? So that's showing a positive relationship. However, the points are kind of far apart, right? These points in this first graph right here, um, they're not real close together. Right, so that's why this is called a weak positive. And that's because the points are kind of far apart, kind of far apart, right? They're not real close together. 
But if I compare that to this one that has a strong negative, look how close together the points are in the second graph. They're going down, so it has a negative correlation, but these points are really close together. So when it's strong, right, we're just going to make a little note here that the points are close together. So that's the difference between a strong relationship and a weak relationship, is just how close together the points are. Now these two on the bottom here are nonlinear because they have an obvious curve in them, right? So I think we should highlight that or something because the curve, it won't be something, you know, that, that you just see like a little bit of a curve. You will see an obvious curve, right? So I'm going to highlight that. When it's nonlinear, there is an obvious curve. And I can see this first one, there's an obvious curve right there. And this one, there's an obvious curve right there. Okay, so these are both nonlinear. Looks like the one on the left has a stronger relationship, right? Looks like those points are a little closer together. The ones on the right, they seem a little bit farther apart. So on the right here, why don't you guys take a minute and describe each of those scatter plots as linear or nonlinear, first of all. So in other words, does it look like it's a straight line or does it look like there's a pretty obvious curve in there, right? So linear or nonlinear. And then also indicate whether the association or the relationship is a strong association or a weak association. And remember, that's all about how far apart the points are. So take a second to do that. Maybe stop the video for a minute. And then I will talk about it. We'll see how you did. So I would say that one of these graphs is definitely linear and one is nonlinear. And I'm hoping that you realized that this first graph, graph A, is showing a linear relationship. And remember, the points are not going to be perfect, but I do not see an obvious curve anywhere in graph A. Graph B, I see an obvious curve, right? So this one is going to be nonlinear because that one definitely has a curve in it. This linear over here, I would also say that it is negative, right? Because it looks like these points are going down. And these points do not look very close together to me, right? They look kind of far apart. So I'm going to say this is a weak negative relationship. That looks a little sloppy there, but there we go. That's a better E. And then for graph B, this is looking a little stronger to me, right? They're a little close together and it's nonlinear, but I would still say these points are going up. So even though it's nonlinear, I would still say that it's positive. And I don't really know if I would consider it to be a strong positive, um, but it's definitely positive, right? And again, that's just kind of, I don't want you to worry too much about whether it's strong or weak. Do you know what I mean? I think if we look at the graphs on the left, like the graphs up here where we have our two linear relationships, I made it very obvious in these examples the difference between a weak and a strong, right? So a strong, the points are like practically on top of each other. It's very strong. But with a weak, they're just a little bit farther apart. So that's kind of like up for your interpretation a little bit, but just so long as you understand what I mean by strong or weak. All right, so these are some basic things here about uh, scatter plots. Just a bunch of points on a graph. We're not going to connect them with a line at this point, right? Eventually, we're going to find a line of best fit, but we'll get there in a future lesson. For now, we're just going to be looking at these points on the graph. We're looking for outliers. We're looking for gaps. We're looking for clusters. We're looking to see, is it positive? Is it negative? Or is there no correlation? We're also looking to see, is it linear? Is it nonlinear? Is it strong? Is it weak? Right? So those are all the different words that we're going to be using to describe our scatter plots. So until next time, have a great day, and I'll see you uh, for our next lesson.